I've noticed a lot of growers use ultrasonic humidifiers and I wanted to just do a little video about um, what kind of humidifier I use, why I like it the most, and um, just other things. There's basically three types of humidifiers. There's the steam kind that we all know about. Um, those would actually be okay for a small growing area. Um, as long as it has the safety feature where if it if it gets empty it doesn't like start on fire or burn the heating element out um, those are the hot warm mist kind and those are pretty inexpensive then we have the ultrasonic humidifiers like everybody uses oh this isn't plugged in um, but they have the little they have the little disc down in the bottom that vi basically vibrates so fast or puts out some kind of noise that um, turns the water into a mist. And since it's not steam, anything that's in the water is also, like the solids, if you've got hard water, that will end up in the mist as well. And um, if you use hard water, you that little metal disc is going to get plugged up pretty easily and then the little sensor right uh, right there that gets some crap on it too and you have to clean that so um, these are really easy to use oh hang on I can't get the lid back on these are very easy to use and they have the nice adjusting control so uh, they're they're pretty good if you've got good water. These are usually about fifty to seventy-five dollars, I think, for the this is you know the regular size kind. Um, I've never got had one of these last over a year, even with using pure water. But the biggest problem I have with these is even if you're using, well, I used mine with hard water, and if you use hard water and you're fogging up the place you're going to get a hard water film on everything. Carpet, walls, furniture, plants, shelves, everything in the room. And also, the other thing that I don't like about these is that since the mist comes out, and it's kind of, it's, I mean, they're small droplets, but it's still kind of thick, it kind of, it comes out and then it comes back down. So if, say, I wanted to use this one to humidify my grow room, which is my plants are up here and over here I'd have to use a fan to push this this uh, humidity all over and you can't exactly set a fan right here because then your fan will get wet so that was always kind of a, a pain in the butt for me as well so finally after buying cool mist humidifiers for years and years at like uh, thrift stores and stuff. That is one thing you can get them pretty cheap at thrift stores. Oh yeah, one other thing. If you have contaminants in here, say you touch a plant with virus and then you go filling this up with your virusy hands and that gets in there, that stuff that comes out of here could infect your plants. So keeping these totally sterile is a huge, huge um, issue I think that people overlook. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so finally I bought this. This is a four gallon, this is what they call um, an evaporative type humidifier. You don't see anything coming out of it because the way this works, you put a wick in the humidifier. Hang on, let me stand up a little bit. This is the humidifier with the the top bits taken off. Um, so this is part, this is where the water goes. Your um, wick goes in here. Mine are the, kind of a big size because this is a pretty big humidifier and uh, they cost, depending where I get them, from like six fifty to ten dollars. But if I use pure water, they last pretty long. Um, they do eventually get clogged up with mineral salts. I don't know if this is going to show up. 
but once they start getting clogged, you can flip them over and then and then get a little bit more time out of them. So on this piece, I just have this uh, the main part down here because I am going to clean that and I wanted to videotape it. So you've got your, um, you know, it turns on. You can set this. It's got a little, what do they call it, humidistat back here so it can sense what your humidity is. And you've got, on this one, you've got three different fan settings, and you've got, um, you can set what humidity you want, and it goes up to 65. At 65, it won't shut off, it'll just run continuously, but 60%, for most people in their row rooms, that's fine. I mean, unless you've got mounted plants and really hot lights, 60 is plenty. So, um, also, another thing I love about this is it will cool the air. It's basically kind of like a swamp cooler. So it sucks in the dry the dry air, or the dryish air, and uh, pulls it through. The air gets pulled in through here. That soaks up water. And then the air is pulled through that. The air is pulled through here by the fan that's in this piece down here. And um, this is a whole house humidifier. It's a moist air. I don't know what the um, model is because I don't have the papers anymore. I've had this for ages. And it's never had any problems. Knock on wood. I'm surprised, but I've had this at least, at least five years. It's been a long time. I think it's been even longer than that, but... And this can humidify a massive room in about 10 minutes. Um, if I turn turn it all the way up, my, my room is probably 20 by 10 or 20 by 15, or maybe it's even longer than that. Big room. <laughs> it's basically the size of a bedroom, another bedroom, and a hallway. Because this bedroom's downstairs that, um, so yeah, like two bedrooms in a hallway. It's a pretty big thing. And this can get the humidity up to 60% on high in about 10 minutes. So I like to run this sort of um, either at 60 or 65 all day. And it's kind of, it's kind of in the not, I don't know, it's not the best area for it, like, I wish, I don't know, maybe I'll put it somewhere else later in my grow room. But for now, it's it's over on the side here. Then I've got my, my grow cabinet. And then I have my other tables over here. So it gets pretty dry over there in the, cor in the far corner. Hang on, let me stand up. I'll show you. Way over there. It gets kind of dry over there. So I think I might stick another little humidifier over there. But... Um, so I love this. It keeps stuff cool. I don't like to have water dripping on it, but I used to, when I was growing vertically, I'd put it on the bottom of my shelf and then let that air, I'd stick it under, like, under here, and then I'd let all that air blow up throughout the plants, and that was kind of awesome. But then when I started putting trays underneath to catch the drip water, it didn't work that well. So, um... Oh yeah, and then another thing, this is four gallons. When I when I was shopping for humidifiers, I was trying to find the biggest one I could find, and I was confused that I didn't realize that the base piece, this holds two gallons, and then the water piece holds two gallons also. So <clears throat> this sits on, sorry about that. This piece sits on the front of here, like this, and that puts the water in. And I have to fill this twice until it stops bubbling and stops releasing. So um, I returned a few humidifiers that I was like, that doesn't look like that can hold four gallons, but I was forgetting about the little, the fact that the base holds a lot of water. Now, if I was going to buy another one, there are some things I really don't like about this, and I guess I could kind of fix it if I wanted to, but 
There are way too many things that hold the filter in place, in my opinion, and and then it's got these where the ca the casters come in from the bottom, and then it's got this that kind of stabilizes the uh, the reservoir. But cleaning this and getting all in here is kind of a pain in the butt. So I do like that this piece you can take this off and totally remove that. But then again, you have whoops, I'm so sorry. Then again, you have all these other little nooks and crannies and stuff that you have to get into, and I've had a hard time finding any one brush that kind of cleans this really well, and it's just, just I don't like cleaning it. As you might be able to tell, it looks kind of dirty. It's actually not as dirty as it looks, I think. Um, and you do have to clean these probably not as often as the ultrasonic kind, because I think I feel like the ultrasonic kinds just get dirty so fast and then I don't know I maybe replace a, a wick about about every month or so I think this one's actually lasted longer and then I've got an RO system also and when you first turn on your RO system your water is generally higher in TDS than it is when it's running normally because um, if you don't know about that look up TDS creep basically what it is is the membrane wants to have an equal amount of salts on both sides. So if it's been shut off, like for, mine will do it even if I've got it shut off for about 20 minutes, that TDS will come up. So what I do is for the first few minutes when I run, when I'm, when I'm starting to make water, I just let the water run into a gallon jug and I save that because it could be up as high as like 200. And then, so I'm not throwing any water away. And so I use that in here, except, of course, I'm throwing away the water that uh, goes down the drain. Because if I use that in, in here, it would be like a thousand TDS, and this would get salty really fast. So, yeah, benefits of this kind is you, it, you, it's automatic air movement. It cools the temperature. Um, you you're not going to get like contamination because it, the water is evaporated. It's not tiny droplets. You're not going to get any um, deposits on anything. And it, it distributes it really, really well. This fan, it's a pretty big fan. It's a, uh, there's, oh, it looks tiny now, of course, because my hand is way up here. But it's probably... 18, no, not 18 inches, maybe a foot across that fan, so it's a pretty big fan. And, um, yeah, it can drop the temperature a huge amount. If I don't have, at least, depending on, like, how humid the air is, they can drop the, 20, the temperature 15, 20 degrees. So that keeps, when I've got all my lights on over here, I don't, whoops, I don't have my LEDs over on the other side on because... It's, uh, it is, sorry about this, because I wanted kind of not a crazy color. Oh my goodness, what happened was my LEDs here just switched back on to regular grow mode. I have a button that is view mode that gives me white light. <clears throat> and it goes off after about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, it'll go back to regular grow mode. So, uh, yeah, I like these. Oh, yeah, and the cost of this, this was, I think it was $100. It may have been 120 But if I would have been buying new ultrasonic humidifiers as long as this has lasted, this has paid for itself over and over, multiple times. And the benefits that I get from it are just fantastic. And I never, like, I don't know, I feel like everybody likes the ultrasonic humidifiers, because they are pretty cool, and you can get um, some nice cloudy mists. Like, I had a little grow room with one one cool mist humidifier on high all the time. It would get cloudy in there, literally. <laughs> and that was pretty neat, but it's not really needed. It doesn't give you any. It doesn't give you any air movement. They can leave that deposit. You have to replace the um, the de demineralization cartridges, which is gets. Those are pretty expensive, and I don't know. And then you have, like, if you want to clean these out, see, I've got some algae growth around that 
that circular part right there, that is so hard to wash out and then to get all the water out. So I'm just not a big fan of ultrasonic humidifiers anymore. I like I like the uh, evaporative types, and <clears throat> especially if you're a lights grower, an evaporative type humidifier is probably going to be a really good friend of yours. <laughs> So, and then the way, I guess I should cover this too, the way I have it, since my humidifier is over here on the side of my grow room, on top of my lights here, I have another fan that kind of blows in, it actually hits right where that Phalaenopsis is, about right there. So I need to angle it a little bit more to get over in that corner, but, you know, I just need to put another fan in here and kind of get some, just play around with my air movement. So I guess that is everything that I wanted. Ooh, real quick though. Do, 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 do. I got to show you this because I'm probably going to forget to make a video. <laughs> this is Triumphal Coronation Seto and the flowers are big and round and gorgeous. And then I've got those two other flowers way over on that side. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope that helps when you get rid of your first humidifier. Get the biggest kind that you can find. If you've got a big grow space, get the biggest one you can find and get an evaporative type, and especially if you've got heat problems. You'll be so, so happy that you did. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Happy growing. All those things.